Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back on my 1994 Subaru Sambar KS4 K-Truck. In one of the very first videos I did on this little imported Subaru mini truck, I went over every single thing I found wrong with it. And amongst all of the things I found wrong, which there wasn't terribly many, but one of the things was the rear shocks were blown out. They were leaking hydraulic fluid and needed to replace those. And in today's video, that's what we're gonna be doing. Finally got in some KYB shocks from Japan and we are going to be upgrading the ride quality of this little truck. First things first, we need to jack the back of the truck up and get it supported on jack stands. The left point is underneath the plate for the rear differential slash transaxle. Always be sure to give a safety check and wiggle the truck. Make sure it's sturdy on the jack stands. Now we can remove both rear wheels. First, we'll remove the upper 17 millimeter bolt, 17 millimeter headed bolt. Good to support that before you let that drop down. So, top of our shock absorber is freed. Now, for our bottom mount, that is a 14 millimeter nut and a 14 millimeter headed bolt. And you can remove the shock absorber. And we repeat the process on the passenger side. All right, so here's our factory Subaru Tokiko shocks versus the KYBs we're gonna be installing. This is a KYB part number 442037. These are not the factory shocks for the Sambar truck. These are actually for, if I recall correctly, uh, Subaru Domingo, which is a slightly bigger vehicle, but overall length of the shock absorber is the same. It appears that the actual cylinder is the same. The only difference is a slight bit of difference in the shape and length of this bottom mounting area. It looks like it's a little bit longer on these shocks, but overall, from eyelet hole to eyelet hole, they're the same overall length, so we shouldn't have any issue. If anything, it might give a little bit more dampening than the factory Tokikos and uh, give it a little bit more firm of a ride in the rear. So as you saw, the removal process was very simple. The installation process is just as simple. This is a very quick 
uh, replacements you can do in your driveway. Again, we see here evidence of where these shocks were leaking. It might not come through on the video. It might just look like a shiny spot, but there is leakage of the hydraulic fluid inside of these shocks and dirt and stuff is stuck to it. But uh, they have uh, definitely seen better days and they're probably the originals uh, that left the factory with this uh, sandbar in 1993-1994. So this is a little bit of an oddity. I found this out yesterday that these are not like a traditional gas charge strut shock that you would have on a, a regular vehicle. Uh, these come shipped com completely collapsed. If you've bought shock absorbers, you know that normally there is a metal or plastic band wrapped around them to keep them compressed during shipping. And then when you're ready to install them, you snip that band and they fire out to full extension. Not so with these, these are not under uh, full pressure. These are a dampener for the coil spring more than they are an actual gas powered strut shock. So there is a procedure to bleed air from these because they can get trapped air in them in shipping with them being compressed. I'll put that on the screen right now. I'm not really gonna show you me going through the bleed process. It's fairly simple for you to read off on screen the directions, uh, but basically all you do is uh, when you open the box and they're collapsed, you fully extend them, and then you push them down to about half travel and lightly grab them with your fingertips and see if you can move them in or out more than 10 millimeters with light effort. If you can, there's some trapped air in there. So you go through the bleed procedure, which is outlined below that, where you fully extend the rod with the piston up, you flip the uh, shock over vertically, compress it, and uh, flip it back over vertically. You don't want to lay them on their side once you've done the bleed procedure because air can get back into them. So pretty much bleed them and put them on, keep them upright, keep them vertical. You don't want to lay them back down like this because, again, you can get air back in it and have to go through the procedure again. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bled, and then we will reinstall them or install them on the sandbar. All right, shock is bled and ready for installation. Just as quick and simple as the removal. Center yourself up on the eyelet. Run your bottom bolt and nut through, or bolt through and attach the nut. Now we will need to take our floor jack and jack up on the bottom of the control arm uh, to get this in. Uh, then we will need to jack the control arm up to fully collapse the suspension, just into the point that we start picking up off of the jack stand. At that point, we can go ahead with the torque wrench and torque the upper bolt and torque the lower nut and bolt. The suspension has to be loaded before torquing it. The top 17 millimeter bolt we are torquing to 59 newton meters and the bottom we will torque to 39.2 newton meters which equates out to really quickly i'll check uh, 43.5 foot pounds So now that's done, we can go ahead and relieve our pressure from our jack, let the suspension release, put the weight of the truck back on that jack stand for safety, and move to the driver's side.
just until we lift the truck up off the jack stand so full weight is on the suspension just like so again 59 newton meters for the top 17 millimeter bolt And release the jack. Bearing weight of the vehicle back on the jack stand. Now reinstall our rear wheels. We can jack the truck up, take the jack stands out from under it, and lower it to the ground. Back to the ground. Now go through and retorque your wheel nuts to 120 Newton meters or I think it's 88.5 foot pounds. And that'll do it. All we've got to do now is go for a test drive and enjoy our new smooth ride with our new rear shocks installed on our sandbar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.